Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. 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 Under the law, he was born under the law. He lived the law, mm-hmm. right? Yes. Amen. Then he died and he rose again to do what? Deliver us from the law. Amen. And he did it one for all. Amen. One Hallelujah. For all. Amen. Now, if you haven't accepted what he has done for you, you need to know that he he's done it for you. Amen. Yes. He's done it once. For all. Now, I'm not here to, you know, mess with your education, but all kind of means everyone. Everybody. Yeah, that's it. Everybody. Whether you're from down, deep down south or North Yankee. Amen. It's everybody. It's everybody. It don't make any difference. It's everybody. Amen. He did it for us all. Pray with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for... What you have been doing, Father God, the love, Father, that you have been just, oh, how can I say, you have just been flooding us with your love, Father God. And Father God, we thank you so, so much, Father. And Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, as I open my mouth, you give me what to say. Lord, let the people feel your love. Feel your great mercy, Father God. Feel your loving kindness, Father God. Let them, Father God, Leave out of this place feeling better than what they did when they came in. Yes, hallelujah. I declare that it's it's done right now. Hallelujah. I declare that it's done right now. I bind anything that would try to come up against this word right now in the name of Jesus. Everyone will get an understanding from the youngest in spirit to the oldest. Yes. Hallelujah. Everyone will hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying yes. to them today. Thank you, Lord, that your word will go forth and not return void, but it will accomplish everything that you have called it. Thank you, Lord, that your word is flowing from my belly like rivers of living water, and your people are like the trees planted by those rivers bearing fruit in their season, and their season is now. They have been made for such a time as this. They said we were about to go through a, uh, we went through a pandemic, now they're talking about a recession. But see, Father, you made us for such a time as this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And come out of this. Amen. And Father God, we thank you that you're starting right here. You now give me your thoughts. Use my vocal cords to bless your people. Yes. In Jesus' holy name, we pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I tell you what, boy, I was like, I got to get that album. I hear him saying it. I got to get that album. They're doing it up. Amen. One way. I was like, oh, Lord, they're singing it up. They're doing it. I went in the back and, 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 and I saw them in the back from financing. I said, Lord, man, we're doing it up, man. One way, we need to go ahead and get them a record contract. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. All right, so we're going to continue on with Once for All. Amen. 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 Now, we started uh, two weeks ago, actually. We started with Hebrews 10. Uh, we, we read 1 through 23, and we were using the NIV at the time. And what was happening there was Paul had wrote all of the Christians um, dealing with mainly dealing with the Messianic Jews or the, or the Hebrew Christians but he wrote to all of the Christians who were considering turning back to Judaism mm-hmm. see if you learned the old, let me tell you something about the law the law, a lot of people think that it was for Christians the law was never given to Christians the law wasn't for Christians the law was for the Jews there was a reason why they had the law. The Hebrew children decided to be arrogant, and because they were arrogant in Exodus 19, you will see that their arrogance caused them to have to get the law. They said, like most people do today, oh, Lord, whatever you say, I can, I'll can. say. Whatever you do, whatever you say I can do, I can do. Whatever you say I can have, I can have. I'll do whatever you say, Lord. Have you ever heard that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> but that's what they were doing. Whatever you, whatever you said, Lord, we can do. 
And so there was how many commandments all together? 613. We're talking the moral, the, the uh, civil, and the ceremonial law, right? All together was 613. The moral law was just 10. That was the ones that were wrong on stone. Now, people couldn't even live by 10, mm. let alone the other 603, mm. if you keep reading all the way through Deuteronomy. Mm. So what Paul was doing, because Paul had been delivered from living under the law. Paul had been delivered on the road to Damascus. And that memory when uh, he had those scales on his eyes? Mm -hmm. And he kept those scales on his eyes for how many days? Three days, Three days. right? Three days. So it was just like a resurrection, right? That's it. Three days after the third day, those scales came off his eyes it's because uh, uh, he got prayed for, the scales came off his eyes. And when the scales came off his eyes, he saw things different. Why? Because he knew he was under a new contract or a new covenant. Amen? Amen. And so he started teaching people about the new covenant because now he was Apostle Paul. Mm -hmm. He was no longer the Pharisee Saul. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen? He was a Pharisee when he was known as Saul. He was a Pharisee. And not only was he a Pharisee, but Scripture says he was the Pharisee of the Pharisees. Mm -hmm. I still run into a lot of them today. Mm -hmm. Pharisee of Pharisees, judging everybody, condemning everybody, telling you you're not worthy, telling you where are you going. I'm like, wow, Jesus never did that. Where'd you get that from? Uh -oh, well, well, it's in the Bible, see? The problem is too many people are being taught the Bible the wrong way. There are things that was true in the Old Testament that are not true in the New Testament. Amen. Amen. Why? Because there are two different covenants. Amen. You cannot be under the New Covenant and live by the Old Covenant. Why? Because you won't get nothing. In fact, the Bible says in Galatians 5 and 4, if you are living under grace and then you go back to the law, you have fallen from grace. Amen. All these people running around tomorrow. When you sin, you fell from grace. They sin, they fell from grace. Sin ain't got nothing to do with people falling from grace. Everybody sin from the pulpit to the parking lot. Amen. 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 Nobody got a perfect, what they call a perfect life. We're perfect in Christ. Amen. 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 By his blood. Why? Because what he did made up what we couldn't do. Amen. 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 So Paul was saying, hey, I can't have you guys going back to Judaism, because the Old Testament was Judaism. There's not a sense, somebody said it was Christians in the Old Testament, you better tell them the devil is a lie. Mm -hmm. There ain't no truth in that. <laughs> There's not a Christian in the Old Testament. The Christian didn't even come on the scene until Acts. The book of Acts. When the Holy Spirit fell upon everybody. Mm -hmm. Huh? Yeah. See, but people don't know that. What people think is, oh, well, I, 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 I'm a Christian, so I'm supposed to live the whole entire Bible. No. That's just like us in history now. And I'm going to talk about some things, and it may be kind of rough. I just ask that you would just stand with me, okay? Amen. That's like us being in history now. If, if, if we never talked about slavery, mm -hmm. don't you know that that same, those same sins, that same Mistake, that same mess will repeat itself. Yep. So we have to talk about the history so that we don't repeat the mistakes in the past yeah, that we did right. in the past. Amen. 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 Well, the Old Testament is the same way. The Old Testament is showing us the people's mistakes. And, and if we can just simply live under our new covenant, mm -hmm. we won't repeat the mistakes of the past. That's right. Amen. Amen. The Old Covenant is a history. Come on. Amen? Uh -huh. The new covenant is what you are living. Amen. There's a difference. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? There is a difference. The old covenant, the Bible said, was a shadow of things to come. Amen. So who was we, who were we waiting on to come? Jesus. Jesus. Why do we act like, because this is the law. I'm sorry to put y'all on the law side. Why do we act like Jesus never came. Mm. Why do we act like Jesus never came? 
Well, the Bible says, Thou shalt not. Jesus. Right? Where did the Bible say that at? Well, it was wrote in the Mosaic law. Thou shalt not. But what did Jesus say? Jesus said that you can do. Amen. Amen. Come on. Amen. Yes, he did. Amen. He said you can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Hallelujah. Amen. You are more than conquerors. Amen. Amen. Through him who loved you. Amen. 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 See, if you are trying to live the thou shalt not, then if you live by the law, you're going to die by the law. And you're going to have a very unhealthy, unhappy life. Mm -hmm. Why do somebody make a new contract? Why would somebody make a new contract? To what? Say that again. Avoid out the old. Avoid out or make obsolete mm -hmm. the old, right? So what did the Bible say about the old covenant? The Bible said that it was obsolete. I bet you pastors don't teach that. <laughs> and it's in the Bible. Why, why don't people, why do people like to teach bondage instead of teach freedom? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, and you should know the truth, and the truth shall what? Set you free. Amen. And then, if the Son therefore shall make you free, you, you shall, shall be free indeed. Jesus wanted people free. You know what the Pharisees were saying? They said, we're not in no bondage. And they were in all types of bondage. You know why? Because they were trying to look a certain way for the people. They were trying to be holier than thou. And Jesus wasn't about that. When Jesus came, they didn't even recognize him because he did not look like them. Amen. He didn't come Amen. looking like a law-abiding citizen. <laughs> hmm? Amen. I read this book. It was called Beautiful Outlaw. It was talking about Jesus. Mm -hmm. Why? Because he, he, even though he lived by the law, he came to bring us out from under the law. He made us, per se, outlaws. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's one of those outlaws I accept. Amen. 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 No, so we need to learn about our new covenant, and we also need to learn our history in the old covenant, Amen. understanding that it was pointing to the new covenant, right? Amen. It's a big circle. It's a big circle. So let's keep going forth learning about this covenant. Amen. Are y'all with me? Amen. Amen. Yes, yes. I got a question for you. And you all have been here. Did the law, yep, I'm talking about the Mosaic law, yep, I'm talking about the Ten Commandments, <laughs> 603, yep, I'm talking about those. Did the law promise you salvation? <laughs> Who got saved under the law? Nobody got saved under the law. People in the Old Testament didn't get saved under the law. No. Mm -mm. That's why people in the Old Testament, the ones, see, let me tell you something. I'm getting ahead of myself. But you know what? I'm going to let the Lord lead me. Amen. How about that? When Jesus went to hell, we always talk about how Jesus fought and, and whooped up on the devil and took the keys, right? I'm going to tell you how Jesus fought. It was nice and sweet. Uh, we, don't, we, don't, we, we may hit the scripture there. I got it in the scripture, right? And what Jesus did was went down, when he went down, when he went down to hell, what he did was he preached. Mm -hmm. The scripture says that. I, I will show it to you. He preached the gospel to those who didn't have the opportunity to be able to know who he was. Mm -hmm. And then once he did that, those who accepted him, when Jesus came back to life, what happened? He, they all came back. Amen. Can you imagine that? Uncle George coming to the house after he's been gone for so long. Yeah, hold up, dude. Now, I know I was at your funeral. What are you doing here now? No, I'm not giving you a sandwich. 
So you know, see, you guys, <laughs> they came back to life. Why? Because they had an opportunity now to get saved. Amen. How did he fight? He fought with the word. He fought with the word. The sword, the double-edged sword. Revelation called the double-edged sword. It's ever come from his mouth, didn't it? I know people are people are like, whoo, that's what he did? Yeah, because we often talk about how Jesus went down to heaven and whooped up the devil. Yes, that's how he did with the word. He preached to everybody else down there, and those who accepted him came back. I will show it to you Amen. in scripture. Amen? Amen. All right, so let's read 1 Timothy 4. Let's go to verse 1. Don't read me in NIV. And this is a series, so we're taking our time. Amen? Amen. I would ask that you try not to miss any of the series. Because I always say we start out on the runway and then we take off. Mm -hmm. And I don't want you to come into, come into the place where we're already flying without you getting the basics or getting the runway. Okay. Are you there? 1 Timothy 4, 1, NIV. And it says this. The Spirit clearly says, now that Spirit there is capitalized. Amen. It ain't talking about man's Spirit. It's talking about the Spirit of God. Amen? Amen. The Holy Spirit. The Spirit clearly says that in later times, some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. Now, how long did you think they were talking about folks in the street? Because we were taught that this was talking about folks in the street. This scripture is not talking about folks in the street. You know who it's talking about? Let's go forward. Number two, such teachings come through hypocritical liars whose conscience have been seared as with a hot iron. So this was talking to leaders. Amen. Amen. Amen, pastors, elders, deacons. Whatever, whatever. Whatever you call yourself. There's so many different titles out there nowadays. I, 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 I can't keep up with them. <laughs> Best title you can ever have is just man of God or woman of God. Amen? Amen. So such teaching came through those hypocritical lives. Verse 3 says, They forbid people to marry and order them to abstain from certain foods, which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and who know the truth. Now this is Paul talking. Amen? For everything God created is good. Y'all see that? Amen. Yeah, you know, people talk, people preach like God is hiding something from them. God ain't hiding nothing from you. He wants you to have everything. In fact, grace has already set everything up for you. Amen. It is up to you to now use your faith. Amen. 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 Your faith in order to obtain what grace has already provided. Amen. When Jesus died on the cross once for all, he said it is finished. How many times did he say that? Once for all. If it's finished, that means it's finished. That's why he sat down at the right hand of the Father. He's the only priest in the Bible who got to sit down while on duty. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. For everything God created is good and nothing is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving because it is consecrated by the word of God and prayer. Amen. 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 Now we're going to go back a little bit. Oh, no, I didn't finish. I'm sorry. Because I have to explain this to you. It's really good. Verse 6, if you point these things out to brothers and sisters, y'all, you will be a good minister of Christ Jesus, brought up in the truths, y'all see that, mm -hmm. of the faith and of the good teaching that you have followed, have nothing to do with godless myths and old wives tales, you know what that's talking about, right? That's talking about all that, you know, we talk about good luck and all that type of stuff, and you know what? You can't believe in luck and have faith at the same time. Amen. Either you're going to have faith or you're going to have luck. Which one is it? Amen. I trust in God. I have faith. I don't have luck. This is talking That's about right. also, are you going to believe your horoscope or are you going to believe the Bible for your life? Amen. Huh? We got too many, too many Christians operating in superstition. 
And God does not want you to be operating as a superstitious person. Why? Because he gave you faith. Amen. Amen. And faith does not include your superstitions. Amen. 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 Hey, let's see what my horoscope say today. I'm Capricorn. Uh, it says uh, today is going to be a bad day, and I'm going to meet somebody who's going to, you know, rob me. And then, and you think about that stuff. You go out and you pass it along. It's funny because more people pass on that type of crap instead of passing on the word of God. Amen. Hey, you might as well go get a fortune cookie, pull the paper out of it, and read it and believe it. <laughs> huh? Y'all need to understand who y'all serve. Amen. God never Amen. said good luck. You know what he said? God's feet. Amen. 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 So we need to trash that good luck. Everybody come out, good luck. I got news for you. Rabbit foot. It's no good. It's, it's not good luck. The rabbit had four of them, and it didn't work for him. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? So why are you running around talking about good luck, rubbing on something that's dead? Yeah. <laughs> you need a resurrection, huh? All that stuff. Look, God is not into that, and that's what He's telling us here. Stay away from that type of stuff. Amen. Either you gonna believe your horoscope, or you gonna believe God. I choose to believe these scriptures. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Have nothing to do with godless myths and old wise tales. Rather, train yourself to be godly. Train yourself to be godly. Physical training is some value. But godliness has value for all things, holding promise for both the present life and the life to come. Amen. 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 So think about that physical training. Everybody should do some physical training. Why? Because this is the temple of the Holy Spirit, right? Amen. And the temple of the Holy Spirit house the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. So when God needs to do something here in this earth, he wants to go through his spirit, and his spirit is in you, so he wants to use you. Amen. Amen. If he's going to use you, then you need to make sure that your vehicle, which is your body, Amen. is ready it, 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 it's ready to go. It's ready to, to, to take off. It's ready to hit the road. It's ready to, as we say, put the pedal to the metal. Amen. Amen. And some, but we, we can't do that if we're not doing any training. But understand, your spiritual training means a whole lot more because your spiritual training gives you benefits now and gives you and benefits in the life to come. Amen. 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 we are y'all still with me? Amen. Okay, all right, all right. I hear y'all. I hear y'all. <laughs> I hear y'all. Okay, I'm about to start defining some stuff in the scripture we just talked about. So the scripture here, verse verse one, says the spirit clearly says that in later times some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. Right mm -hmm. now. If you know anything about Revelations 2, 13 to 14, you will know that when Satan was cast down to earth, a lot of people think Satan was cast to hell. Satan ain't never seen hell yet. No, he was cast down to the earth. That's why he's messing with you. Amen. Huh? Amen. Because he was cast down to the earth. Now, <clears throat> the Bible tells us in the uh, Revelations that um, here I'll just read it. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Revelation 2, 13 through 14 New Living Translation. It says this. It says I know that you live in the city where the great throne of Satan is located and yet you have remained loyal to me and you refuse to deny me even when Antipas, my faithful witness, was murdered among you by Satan's followers. So I need mean, y'all to understand, when we go back to what we started at, it's talking about people who were actually following Satan. And it was bringing the wrong gospel. Y'all need me to piece that together for y'all? Because they were bringing, because understand this, when Satan was cast down to the earth, and, and, and the first church started, the first church started with the Catholic Church. And once the first church was started, 
then people were being put on the throne. And Antipas was on the throne. Antipas mm -hmm. was the man of God. But Satan had Antipas killed. Mm -hmm. All right, martyred. He was killed. So the Satan can set his man on, on the throne. Mm -hmm. now, I'm not going to talk about the Catholic Church, but. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> this is how we have. Uh, this is how certain things have got into the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. And people think it's God when it's not God. That's right. People think it's God when it's not God. Plain and simple. And so we need to know the scriptures. We need to know the covenants. We need to know the dispensations. Mm -hmm. Amen. So we're not caught up and caught off guard. The Bible says that the devil runs around like what? A roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. See, he goes around like a roaring lion. But see, we have the, the lion of Judah working on our behalf. Amen? The lion of Judah is Jesus, if you do not know that. Satan always trying to imitate. He's an imitator. Not a creator. Amen? In verse 13, no, I'm sorry, verse 3, it says, They forbid people to marry and order them to abstain from certain foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and who know the truth. Amen. Now, in Romans 14, it talks about people who are weak in the faith. It talks about people who are weak in the faith in Romans 14. And understand this. In fact, let me read some of this for you. Is that all right? That's all right. All right, I'm going to read from the New Living Translation. I'm going to read from 1 to, I believe, 4. Okay? Because this, these are people right now that are living amongst us. And they're doing these things. And we are so-called supposed to follow these leaders. But if these leaders are the blind leading the blind, you can't follow them. Amen. Jesus gave warning about, hey, I'm warning you against the yeast of the Pharisees. Mm -hmm. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Yes, because that's what that's what it was. Yeast was considered a type, yeast was used like sin. All right, a little bit level the whole lump. That's what the Bible says. All right, are you there? Mm -hmm. It says this: Except Christians who are weak in faith and don't argue with them about what they think is right or wrong. For instance, one person believes it is all right to eat anything, but another believes who has a sensitive conscience will eat only vegetables. Those who think it's all right to eat anything must not look down on those who won't. And those who won't eat certain foods must not condemn those who do. For God has accepted them. Who are you to condemn God's servant? They are responsible to the Lord. So let him tell them whether they are right or wrong. Let the Lord's power, the Lord's power will help them to do as they should. So in here, as we were reading in 1 Timothy, we see this talking about people who are weak in their faith. Who are people who are weak in their faith? Those who are so caught up in condemning everybody and stuck with the thou, thou shalt not. Why? Because they're telling you that you can't do this. You can't do that. You can't do that. But you see, the scripture says, you know what? Accept them. Don't argue with them. Don't, 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 don't worry about that. If that's the way they feel, look. Now, the Holy Spirit will tell you if you need to leave something alone or not. If you are eating certain foods and it is bad for you, the Holy Spirit will tell you that. And at that point is when you're supposed to listen to the Holy Spirit and stop eating those things. See, the Holy Spirit was given to us under our new covenant. Why? Because under the old covenant, they had to follow the written laws. And that's how they were guided. Well, under the new covenant, we are completely guided by the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the Amen. Holy Spirit is love. Amen. Amen. And so if there is something that is going on that ain't right, the Holy Spirit is going to show you, and that's when you follow the Holy Spirit. Amen. I know some be talking about, I'm all, oh, I'm, I'm in the Spirit every day. No, you ain't. <laughs> I'm in the Spirit. I, oh, I'm in the Spirit. No, you not. Talking about you in the spirit. Hey, you know what? Nobody in the spirit 24-7. Why? Because we human. Yeah. We make mistakes. 
We do things, we make people angry, ask her. <laughs> My pastor's not perfect. Don't you ever, ever place that nasty title or tag on me. Ever. Never. Ever. Ever. So I was talking about people who are weak in the faith. They don't eat certain foods, and because they, you know, they, don't, they don't eat certain foods, it's because of a religious reason. It ain't because the Holy Spirit is leading them. It's because if you go back into the Leviticus, you'll find out there are certain foods that they could eat, right? Today, we can eat those foods. Mm -hmm. You know, there's people still today in their religions teaching that you're supposed to sustain from certain foods. <laughs> yes. I know y'all heard it. Don't look at me like I'm strange, like y'all haven't been there before. Y'all been there before. I've been there before. And people are still doing it today. And you know what the Bible says? They're weak in the faith. They're weak in the faith. Afraid to live life. Afraid to go dance. Afraid to go to the bar. Afraid to go uh, be around a lot of people. Afraid to go to the swimming pool. Afraid to go to the gym. Why? Because they're afraid somebody might catch them in a little sin. Nobody care about your sin. <laughs> you are important, but you are not that important. Amen. Amen. Got time to be worried about your mess. Amen. Well, I got to deal with my own mess. Amen. 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 I'm not God. I'm just a guy. Amen. Amen. A shepherd. And this was a, basically a warning about shepherds. I got some more to show y'all with you. Y'all y'all with me? Amen. Okay, all right, all right. So as we as we read that first Timothy 4, 1 through 8, you know, we have heard sermon after sermon in which the pastor seems to be preoccupied with sin. They're so preoccupied with preaching about sin that the members end up with a seared conscience. When it's talking about sin conscious, it's talking about a sin conscious. You're always conscious of sin. God did not want you to be conscious of sin. Amen. If he forgave you for it yesterday, today, and forevermore, Amen. why do you keep bringing it up? Amen. Why do you allow others to bring it up? Yeah. I don't know about bringing it up and say, hey, I'm forgiven. Amen. 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 I'm forgiven. I may not be perfect, but doggone it, I am forgiven. Amen. 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 And God said he would never remember it. No, no more. more. No more. So I said it yesterday, today, and forever. Oh, well, what are you talking about, Pastor? You know, uh, once you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and if you sin, you know, and you fall for grace. Oh, we just read the scripture. We talked about the scripture. Galatians 5 and 4, you go find it for yourself. Mm -hmm. right Amen? Amen. Amen? No. God does not want people to have a sin conscience. That's what was happening in the Old Testament under the law. They had to have a sin conscience. The reason they had a sin conscience is because every year they had to sacrifice. And we talked about it a little bit at the first, uh, when we started this. Every year they had to make sacrifices for their sins, right? Mm -hmm. And then not only did they make sacrifices for this year for their sins, but they had to make sacrifice for their sins of last year, for their sins of the year before that, for their sins of the year before that. So they had to constantly make sacrifices. Now, if you are constantly making sacrifices for sin, what does that keep you at? That means it keeps you thinking about sin. You are completely sin conscious. God does not want his people sin conscious. Amen. 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 How can God use you when you sin conscious? Up here with phony, phony uh, humility. Oh, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. If you don't sit yourself down with that phony humility. Humility, I, I need y'all to understand something. Humility is not the lack of boldness. Come on now. That's what people think humility is. Oh, you got to be meek. No, I'm bold. I'm bold as a lion. Come on. Amen. Man. Religion, we're going to talk a little bit about religion, all right? Because I'm not religious. Amen. 
I'm not religious. Neither am I. I'm a man who has a relationship with Jesus Amen. Christ. Amen. 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 I'm not religious. I will never accept anybody's title other than Christ. Amen. Don't you ever call me a, a, a Baptist, a Methodist, a Lutheran. I, I am only Christ. I don't need that hyphenated name. Amen? Amen. I'm married to Christ and I took his name. Amen. 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 Religion focuses on sin. And God our Father, he gives warning to people who pass out hypocritical information. Mm -hmm. When I say hypocritical, I'm talking about religious information. He gives warnings to people like me. Amen. Amen. I'm preaching at y'all. I'm preaching at me. Yeah, I'm bringing this to you. There is a warning for putting heavy burdens of sin on people because you, when you do that, you scatter the flock. Jeremiah 23, 1 through 4, New Living Translation. Can I read that? Amen. And it says this. I will send disaster upon the leaders. This is talking about the pastors. I will send disaster upon the leaders of my people, the shepherds of my sheep. Who is it talking about? Nobody knows? It's talking about pastors. People in this position. Religious leaders. Amen? Amen. Amen. For they have, he said, the shepherds of my sheep, for they have destroyed and scattered the very ones they were expected to care for. The word care means love. Anytime you see care for, you're talking about something that's expressing love. If I care for you, then I have some love for you. Amen? Amen. Amen. So the very ones, he says, for they have destroyed and scattered the very ones that were expected to care for, says the Lord. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says to these shepherds. Instead of leading my flock to safety, you have deserted them and driven them to destruction. Galatians 5 and 4. You, put, you send them back to the law. You send them back to the old covenant. Are y'all with me? Amen. Now I will pour out judgment on you for the evil you have done to them. Oh, oh so you're telling me, so if I, if I leave grace and go back under the law, it's evil? Yes, because everything that you're saying is that the blood of Jesus is not good enough. So now you have to go and do something to make God listen. Now you have to do something to make God move. Now you're looking for the thou shalt not. You know, God, in the, in the Old Testament, how you know somebody was under the law? Because they would always use the word if. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray. Seek my faith and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven. Then will I forgive their sin and heal the land. That was a condition. That was a condition. And in order for that condition to be met, the, uh, 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 the Hebrews had to do their part. The problem was they couldn't do their part. Why? Because they could not follow the law. Only Jesus could. Anytime you see that, if, understand it's a law. It's, a, it's, it's taking you back. I'll do this if you do that. That was the covenant that they had. Right now, we're still messed up like that as human beings. Because we said we want the love of Christ. We want to have that love that God has and we want to be able to give it to people. What kind of love is that? A non-conditional agape love. Right? But do we have agape love? No. Most of our love is conditional. Oh, girl, you ain't acting right. Because you're not acting right, I'm out. Huh? If he can't get his stuff together, I'm out. It's always that condition. Do you really have unconditional love for one another? Well, if you do, then you have to get past the conditions. How do you get past the conditions? Well, you're just going to have to accept them for who they are. I know it's hard in some households, but praise God you can do it. Luke 11 46. I'm going to read the message version of this. Is that okay? Amen. And this was Jesus talking to these religious scholars, these religious leaders, these, these, 
these Pharisees. He said, Jesus said, you are, and I'm reading the uh, message, right? Jesus said, and I'm going to read it the way I got it here. Jesus said, you are helpless, you religious scholars. You lower people down with rules and regulations, nearly breaking their backs, but never lift even a finger to help. Y'all see that? You know what? Our job is to encourage one another, to lift one another up, to help one another out. Amen? To show that love, right? So you have to watch out for those who are about tearing you down, telling you that you're not worthy enough, telling you that uh, you, know, you shouldn't ask questions like this in the church or you shouldn't do this in the church, or you shouldn't wear that in the church, or you shouldn't speak in the church. You gotta watch out for people like that. Yeah. They're on a power trip. Yeah. That ain't got nothing to do with God. God ain't on a power trip. He already know he did. Amen. 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 So he ain't on no power trip. It's those religious leaders that he always had to deal with. Just like we talked about this morning. How many times did Jesus have a problem with a sinner? Where in the Bible do you see that Jesus had a problem with a sinner? Tell me. Hurry up. You got three seconds. Four, three, two, one. You would never find a scripture. Why? Because he didn't come back to judge the world. He came back that the world through him might be saved. So when my judgmental brothers and sisters get in this position and they start judging everybody for what they're doing, you know, the Bible tells them that you shouldn't judge unless you want to be judged. Right. The same judgment you use to somebody else is going to come back to you. Amen. I like to do like the Bible says. I think I like to get the plank out my own eyes before I try to remove the splinter out of yours. Amen. Amen. We're there to help each other out, to help each other up. Not to tear each other down. Oh, you see such and such gossip. Now I saw the gossip in the church. You see such and such coming out the hotel? What were you doing at the hotel? Checking in. Oh, I'm going to just watch and see if anybody puts the door in. Ah. <laughs> right now, you know, one day I pulled up to a restaurant on my motorcycle. My wife pulled up in the car. I got off the motorcycle and I seen some of my old preacher friends. And I, I have to say that because I don't deal with them jokes no more. They're out there condemning and, 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 and judging and I don't have time for that. That's not who Jesus was. That's not who I am. Amen. Amen. And they call me, hey, man, hey, bro, uh, what happened? What happened? Uh, you, uh, um, you, you're not preaching anymore? Oh, uh, what? I said, what? A preacher can't have a motorcycle? Oh, uh, am I in sin because I have a bike? <laughs> but you know religion to do that to you. Religion to tell you you was in because you got a tattoo. <laughs> and when you go into the Old Testament, which is obsolete, and you read why they had the tattoos, you understand that why they were told that they shouldn't put tattoos on themselves. Got nothing to do with you. Nothing. But the problem is, people don't know that because of what they've been taught. The Bible has not been rightly divided. And this is now the time that God has given us teachers is going to help us rightly explain or divide the word of truth. Amen? You all are called in the fall. You all are teachers. See, I'm telling you, you are leaders being trained to help those out there. Amen. Amen. Those who have been sitting here for a little while, you go out there and see the pastors, you think they know something. Then when they start talking, you realize, mm. oh man, hey, what the heck are you talking about, man? That's not what it means. <laughs> you know why? Because they've been passing down tradition. Mm-hmm. Tradition. And the thing about tradition, tradition isn't once for all. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And people take that tradition and they pass on that same poison to other people in the church. And the people in the church take it out outside the doors and pass it on. No, we need to know the truth because the truth will make us free. Amen. Did I read Jeremiah yet? 
Now, we're going to talk about something that's set up as a shadow and cut. Y'all finished reading what I was reading? All right, let's go to, let's go to Jeremiah 23, 5, and 6. Let's start at 5, 23, 5. I'm reading the New Living Translation right there. <laughs> because what was going on, what I just got finished reading, was how people were putting the pastors, the, 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 the religious people, were putting these burdens on people, telling them about their sin, 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 sin. Sin. <laughs> and God is not concerned about your city sin, sin because Jesus came and he forgave you already. He already Amen. took care of that. So since he already took care of it, he's not bringing it up again. Amen. So every day or every Sunday or Wednesday when you go to a church and they're talking about your city sin, sin, you should get up and walk out and find you a place Amen. where you can be free. Amen. 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 Are you there? Amen. Amen. New New Translation says this. For the time is coming, says the Lord, when I will place a righteous branch on King David's throne. He will be a king who rules with wisdom. He will do what is just and right throughout the land. And this is his name. The Lord is our righteousness, or Jehovah said Canu. All right? In that day, Judah will be saved, and Israel will live in safety. Amen. So, did our Lord of Righteousness come? Yes, yes, yes. he did. Yes. And whether you know it or not, notice how it says, in that day of Judah, and then it says, it separates Judah and Israel. Amen. Why? Because Judah is the people, the word Judah means praise. Amen. And everybody that's in under Judah are the ones who fell under Jesus. The Bible says, if you be Christ, then you be Abraham's seed also. Amen? Amen. In Hebrews, you'll see, I know I'm not going to take that, but you can write it down if you want. In Hebrews 7 and 14, you'll see that we were placed under the tribe of Judah. Why? Because Jesus is under the tribe of Judah. So we came into this promise. We were adopted in. Amen. And so we were known from there as the tribe of Judah. Because we were adopted in. Judah means praise. Do you know how to praise the Lord? Amen. Hallelujah. Do you know how to praise the Lord? I'm not talking about this fake phony. I'm not talking about that. I don't have time to be religious. I ain't got time to play games. If the only thing you know is how to give God, when you dance the walk, then you do the walk. That's right. If you know how to do the, the, the shuffle, then you do the shuffle. That's Whatever right. God puts in your heart, you do. Do not listen to these religious folks. Amen. 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 You run around trying to dance like people. I don't even have a back to dance like that. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you know? Oh, and I need to explain Jacob. Jacob, remember, he was the one who fought God, uh, fought, fought the angel. Mm -hmm. Now Jacob, and it says, Israel will live in safety. And these are the ones who are still under the law. The Bible says they'll live in safety too. Okay, I got y'all. But you need to figure it out. If you don't live by the law, well then you live by the law. If you don't live by grace, you live by the grace. You can't do them both. Amen. Why? Because it's just like, again, new wine being poured in old wine. And when that happens, it bursts and nobody gets benefits from it. Amen. And God does not want his people running around without benefits when he has given us all types of benefits. Amen. 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 Psalm 103 gives us benefits. Yes, We're benefits. It says that he forgives all of our sins. Right? He forgives all of our sins. It says he heals all of our diseases. It says that he delivered us from destruction. Right? It says that he has crowned us with his loving kindness and his tender mercies. Then it says he satisfied our mouths with good things. Amen. So that our youth is renewed like the eagles. How many of you know those benefits? Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. 
those benefits are for us. Amen. Amen. But if you can't figure out what side of the fence, <laughs> see, you know, I grew up in churches when they were talking about the side of the fence was, oh, either you going to follow this law or you're going to be a sinner because you were in the street. That's what that's what the that's what the fence meant. That ain't what the fence means. You know what the fence is? Either you gonna follow grace or you gonna follow the law. Amen. Which one are you gonna follow? Either you under Judah or either you under the tribe of Judah or you under uh, under Israel. Which one are you under? I'm just trying to make it clear for everybody. I'm making it clear. We're almost done, y'all. All right, we're almost done. done. I know I don't want to. I don't want to miss anything. We're almost done. Maybe not. I got a lot more. <laughs> I guess we'll have another one too. Man. Oh, praise God. Amen. 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 I'll tell you what. <clears throat> I got a question for you. How do you know that you have been spiritually infected with the sin conscience? A lot of us have been infected with the same conscience. No, we, we keep bringing it up. We keep bringing it up. Yeah. People think, okay, because I mess up, I have a sin conscience. No, you're not. You don't have a sin conscience. Look, there are things you're going to go through that Paul says, your flesh and your spirit, they're going to war against one another, and this is a battle that we're never free from. That's a mistake. The mistake is you think you can be free from it and all of a sudden you can be perfect. <laughs> you can't be perfect. And man, I, you want to be perfect in God's eyes. He made perfect things. Amen? So how do you know you've been spiritually infected with the sin conscious? I'll tell you how. Sin conscious people are hypocritical, they're judgmental, and they're condemning. Misery loves company, y'all. Right. They go out and find others just like themselves. And, they, and, they, and, they, and this is Matthew 23 and 15, y'all. I'm telling you what the scripture says. All right? Because that's what they do. They go out and they find others and they bring them back. Matthew 23 and 15 says this. Just write it down. Yes, how terrible it will be for you teachers of religious law and you Pharisees. For you cross land and sea to make one convert. And then you turn him into twice the sons of hell. As you yourselves are. I used to be a part of them sons of hell. I'm so glad that God delivered me. Amen. 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 Number two, sin conscious people are in almost a constant state of asking God to forgive them. Mm -hmm. Constant state. First John 2, he writes it down. First John 2, 1 through 2 says this. My dear children, I am writing this to you so that you will so that you will not sin. But if you do sin, there is an advocate, yes, Jesus, yes, yes. Jesus, or someone to plead for you before the Father. Jesus, He is Jesus Christ, the one who pleases God completely. He is the sacrifice for our sins. He takes away not only our sins, but the sins of all the world. You know how many times he did it? Once for all. Come on, amen. Amen. Number three, sin conscious people pray that God will forgive them for their sin, even though they didn't commit the sin. <laughs> Lord, forgive me for, you know, I might have done something I don't know about, but forgive me, Lord. What? You're sin conscious. <laughs> you are sin conscious. You are so concerned about sin. Why? Because that's what you've been taught. That is a dead horse. Jesus took our sin, and what did he do? Took him under the ground. Right? He took them under the ground, left them there, rose for us. And the Bible says, because he rose, we rose. That's why it's important to be baptized. Amen. Because this shows that you are, that, that you, you believe in the symbolic meaning of 
going down and coming back up. When you go down, you'll see them, you'll see them stand out. They drown. They're done. They're washed. They're in their water. When you come up, you are a new creature. Yes. Amen? Amen. You are a new creature. Yes. So now you have no business being worried about or afraid to do things because you might sin. Man, go enjoy life. Have a good time. Amen. Amen. Don't sit up and, and, and let some old religious, legalistic preacher prevent you from enjoying this life. God said everything he gave us, and y'all ready, is good. Uh -huh. Amen? Amen. Amen? Everything he gave us is good. It's funny how we make things sin. I remember I was in this one denomination, and everything was sin. We, we made everything sin. I, we go to the NB Halloween, or I rebuke them demons. The people, we're talking to people. I rebuke them demons, they got this stuff on. We go into the Walmarts or wherever the stores, and, and, and oh, I rebuke that mask. What? Because it's a witch or something like that, so we were rebuking plastic. That was, it's, it's but it was real religious. <laughs> and it made, people, it made people look at us in a certain way. Like, you know, oh, they're so holy. And this is what people want. People, religious people want to look like they're old, so holy. You know, Jesus didn't come back and look like he was old, so holy. Amen. Jesus came back looking like everybody else. Amen. 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 And this is one of the reasons they did not accept him. They think he was coming in on a white stallion. See, that time was coming, but it ain't the way man. They think he was coming in on a white stallion to deal with everybody seeing. Oh, he dealt with everybody seeing, but he wasn't on the white stallion. He was on the donkey. Amen? Amen. On the palm branches to represent victory. He wasn't, he wasn't on the red carpet. He didn't come wielding this the Excalibur and chopping everybody down who's seen. No. He came with the sword. I'm talking about the word. Uh -huh. Amen? Amen. And what he did with the word was cut the chains of bondage. Amen. 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 There are some more things that's got to happen. Some more things we're going to talk about. I'm going to bring the deacons and the ministers up. So we are not finished with this. Praise God. Amen. We are not finished with this. Amen. Because people need to know the truth. Amen. People need to know the truth. And wonder why things aren't working for them. Things don't work for you if you are not, you have to make a decision. God said, right? Amen. He said, he said, look, uh, it's in Revelation, and, it's, and it says it like this. You're neither hot nor cold. You need to be one or the other. He said, if you're not, you're lukewarm. And if you're lukewarm, he said he would do what? Skew you out of his mouth. In other words, you make him sick. And he said that person shouldn't think that they're going to receive anything. How are you going to receive it from God? This is why people are struggling today. Double-minded. You got to figure out what you stand for. Amen? Amen. But people can't when they don't know the truth. Amen. A lot of people don't even know it's two covenants. They think it's one big covenant. What covenant do you fall under? The Bible? <laughs> okay, I'm going to ask you this once again. What covenant do you fall under? The Bible? I, I go, I'm telling you, I believe everything. Mm -hmm. Everything is for me, from Genesis to Mount. Mm -hmm. okay. It's ignorance. It's ignorance. And people need to know the truth. And that's why Jesus came on the scene. Jesus said, one of the things he said is, hey, you Pharisees are in bondage. He was trying to set them free. But they wouldn't allow it. We were Abraham's seed. <laughs> what do you mean we're in bondage? We've never been in any bondage. Yeah. And they were in the bondage of not just uh, of self righteousness, but they were also in the bondage of, uh, uh, you know, how you trying to look a certain way before everybody else? I want you to think that I'm this person, so I'm going to come and look like that person all the time. Mm -hmm. Then when you out of my sight, then I change. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you something it's hard to be under people bondage. Mm -hmm, it is. That's why I, I, I'm like, oh, let that step go. As a pastor, y'all know y'all pastor is real. Y'all know it. 
No more appearing that one way, and then when we leave the church, act another way. Nope, I am ratchet out here, and I'm ratchet in here. Amen. Long time. Long time. They got time to be me. I'm trying to act holy for you. Amen. I'll be found out real quick. <laughs> God loves each and every one of us. Yeah, 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 yeah. And what we have to understand is when he came up with this new covenant, man, this was the best thing since how we say sliced bread. Uh -huh. Ooh, this was the best thing since sliced bread. And in the old covenant, you could not, your life was all about remembering your sin, remembering your sin, remembering your sin. But in the new covenant, God said, hey, Forget about your sin. I forgot about it. You forget about it. Just live your life. Amen. And then, I'm going to tell you, next week we're going to talk about the scripture. But then he tells us that, hey, blessed to those whose sins isn't accounted against them. Amen. Amen. How can you be a person that your sins don't count against you? Well, that means somebody will already have to pay the price. That's right. Because the wages of sin is death. But so somebody would already have to pay the price. So Jesus paid the price. So if I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior, then I've accepted the payment. And since Amen. I've accepted the payment, no longer see there's not God does not do double jeopardy. Yes. Nope. Now that I've been forgiven, I am forgiven. Yes. Jesus died once for oh, all. Hallelujah. I was forgiven once for all. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior out there, I want you to know He is the greatest thing ever. You know, before I before I became a pastor, before I became an elder, deacon, whatever, before I about that, I used to think it was so hard, so hard to be a Christian. And it was because of the teaching that I was getting. I was taught that you had to be perfect. And that's what's wrong with churches today. And people out there in the streets, they think folks in the church are perfect. But it is quite the contrary. We're not perfect. We're people who know that we got a Savior. Amen. 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 And it's the Savior that makes us perfect. Yes, it is. We can't do it on our own. You cannot do it on your own. Amen. So I'm going to ask everyone to please stand. And... I'm going to pray the prayer of salvation. And I want you to know that once you pray this prayer, you may not feel different, but I promise you, you will be different. You may not feel different, but I promise you, you will be different. Well, you know, I, I, I just got finished praying that prayer, and, you know, I still want to go out and smoke some weed. Go smoke your weed, then. <laughs> when you smoke it, I need you to say that I'm the righteousness of Christ. Amen. 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 I'm the righteousness of Christ because eventually it's going to get down in there and you ain't going to want to do it no more. Amen. 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 We already talked about uh, the scripture of uh, Philippians 2 and 13. Philippians 2 and 13 says it is God that works in us. Amen. It's Him that's working in us, giving us the will and the, and the desire, Amen. giving us the power and the desire to do His will. Amen. You've been trying to do it on your own too long. You can't do it on your own. We found out that we couldn't do it on our own. Amen. My will means nothing, but his will means everything. Amen. 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 So he's working through me, changing me, seeing the things that I want to do, that I used to want to do. How about that? I used to want to do, but all of a sudden, I, I, I lost the, I didn't want to do those things anymore. I just lost the desire to do them. It's just gone. And I didn't need no preacher coming telling me that I need to stop doing it. Amen. It takes God. 